Good evening and welcome family, friends, faculty, and honor guests to the 2021 National Honor Society induction. I am honored to be here to celebrate with you the outstanding achievements of these very accomplished students. I would like to start by congratulating our students on their induction into the National Honor Society. I would also like to congratulate all of the families and staff members watching and on behalf of the inductees, thank you all for helping them attain this goal. An honor like this is a wonderful way for the school and community to recognize and celebrate the choices and sometimes the sacrifices these students have made in order to reach this goal. Indeed, these incredible students have sacrificed more in this past year than any other year in recent, me recent memory. Their success is a testament to their resilience and dedication to both scholarship and community. Congratulations again. Good evening, my name is Griffin Mosco, and as a member of this year's NHS Executive Committee, it is my pleasure to be the first to welcome the 2021 Class of Inductees to the National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. All please rise while the South Brunswick High School Concert Choir sings the National Anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last week, whose watch stripes and bright stars through the heavy last fight, for the rabbit we watched was so gallantly I would now like to introduce the superintendent of South Brunswick School District, Mr. Scott Fetter. To our newest members of NHS, I hope when you consider membership, you see this as more than another add-on to your college applications and resumes. Membership is signified by four pillars, and today I want to talk briefly about the pillar of service. Now more than ever in our lives, there are opportunities for service and opportunities to be there for another. This pandemic has placed many families in untenable situations, and so many can use any supports that are available. I encourage you to seek out those opportunities and be the hero for someone in need. You have all completed elements of service in order to be recognized today, and my ask of you is to continue down this path long after your resume or application gets you to the next phase of life. Our world needs you more than any of us may have ever realized. So be the leaders and citizens we all know you to be and continue through life upholding the character of one that truly cares and is there for others. Congratulations to you all for this well-deserved accomplishment. Thank you, Mr. Fetter. My name is Mindy Ritterami and I am the co-advisor to the National Honor Society along with Mrs. Monique Ligori. To add to the welcome from Mrs. Nikachuk and Mr. Fetter, I would like to take the opportunity to recognize and thank the members of the Board of Education, as well as the South Brunswick administrators who are watching tonight. We always appreciate your support. When the National Honor Society was founded in 1921, the goal was to create an organization that would recognize and encourage academic achievement while developing other characteristics essential to citizens in a healthy democracy. This year, 2021, the National Honor Society celebrates its centennial. For the past 100 years, the National Honor Society has enjoyed a reputation of excellence and commitment to its ideals. Certainly this year has been filled with challenges, but we are very sure that the first induction class of 1921 would be very proud to stand with our candidates today. They too stood in the shadow of a global pandemic and found a way to not only persevere, but to excel. 
Tonight's inductees will become part of a 100 year legacy of scholars, community activists, and leaders. 100 years from now, their children and their children's children will reap the benefits of the world made better through their contribution. The tenets of character, scholarship, leadership, and service remain as relevant today as they did in 1921. Indeed, these qualities are to be nurtured and prized now more than ever. It is the recognition of these characteristics in our young people and our rel reliance on them for the future that allows us to hope and to trust that the world will move forward with a renewed commitment to creating a productive, peaceful existence for all of its peoples. Selection to this group is seen as a validation of the candidates' capabilities and contributions. Its members have proven that they are capable of strong and sustained academic performance, are able to provide leadership, and are of honorable and admirable character, and are willing to use their talents and skills for the benefit of others. Through school and community activities, members must maintain and extend the qualities that won them this election. Membership is thus both an honor and a commitment. As members of the National Honor Society, these students will carry the responsibility of their continuing their scholastic success and of being role models for others. All of the young men and women here tonight are exhibited, have exhibited such behavior and have indicated their willingness to continue to serve as role models for all of us. Therefore, I am proud to present these candidates for membership to our principal, Mr. Peter Varela. Good evening, parents, family members, colleagues, honored guests, Board of Education members, Central Administration, National Honor Society members, and especially our inductees. It is an honor to stand before you, virtually, to present to this audience a very select group of young adults. Tonight, we celebrate their induction into a very selective honor society. But before we start our ceremony, I wanna share a short story that highlights the importance of family, the importance of traditions, the importance of teaching and life lessons, the importance of always being there for others, and the importance of giving thanks. Tonight, I ask our inductees to think about the following questions. Are you being inducted into the National Honor Society because of your actions alone? Were there others who helped you along the way? How did your teachers influence you? When you reflect back on family, what were those life lessons that your parents taught you? A few years back, I came across a story that resonated with me. It's a story that emphasizes life lessons that each and every one of us should understand, live the message of it, and pass it down from generation to generation. It is titled, We Are Never Alone. Do you know the legend of the Cherokee Indian youth's rite of passage? His father takes him into the forest, blindfolded, and leaves him alone. He is required to sit on a stump the whole night and not take off the blindfold until the ray of sun shines through it. He is all by himself. He is told that he cannot cry out for help to anyone. He is told that once he survives the night, he is a man. He cannot tell the other boys of this experience. Each boy must come into his own manhood. The story tells of the experience of one boy. He was terrified, blindfolded. He could hear all kinds of noises. Beasts were all around him. Maybe even some humans would hurt him. The wind blew the grass and earth and shook his stump. And he sat stoically, never removing the blindfold. But he knew that it would be, only, it would be his only way he could become a man. Finally, after a long, horrific night, the sun appeared and he removed his blindfold. It was then that he saw his father sitting on the stump next to him at watch the entire night. Inductees, even when we do not know it, our family and friends and teachers are watching out for us, sitting on a stump beside us, protecting us, supporting us, and believing in us. As I conclude my congratulations, I want to recognize each and every one of you for achieving the honor of being inducted into the National Honor Society. I ask you, in fact, I ask everyone watching this video tonight to remember those that have sat on that stump next to you through the good times and the not so good times. Take the time to be grateful. 
Remember what they have done for you and recognize that your success is a reality because of your efforts, determination, and the support of others. Congratulations, scholars. Thank you, Mr. Varela. I would now like to acknowledge two special individuals who have helped us make this virtual ceremony possible. Mrs. Ligori and I would like to specifically thank Mr. Tim Sweeney, the director of VTN, and Lauren Morris, our activities coordinator. Thank you for helping us create a virtual space where we can celebrate and honor our inductees. Your tireless work and unfailing support helped to make tonight so special. We would also like to recognize the South Brunswick School District staff members that each inductee recognized in their application. Each inductee wrote about someone who was and who continues to be an important influence in his or her educational career. These individuals are teachers, counselors, paraprofessionals, administrators, and coaches, just to name a few. What they have in common is their love for their students and the fact that they continue to go above and beyond make a difference in the lives of us here at South Brunswick High School. Not only have these individuals made an impact on our inductees in the past, they continue to guide all of our students even through the uncertain times that we are facing today. Please join me in recognizing these role models. This year's ceremony was planned and is presented by the NHS Executive Committee. This group of seniors represents the entire South Brunswick NHS membership in welcoming this year's candidates. I am pleased to introduce Executive Member Isha Peer, who will begin the induction ceremony. The flame you see before you represents the spirit of the National Honor Society. It burns within each young man and woman who has been brought into membership and lights the way to decisions and actions that lead to success and enrichment for the individual and the community. Membership has to be earned by effective demonstration of the qualities that form the foundation of this organization. Four of my fellow members will now review these qualities, beginning with Ruchi Patel. Abigail Adams once said, learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with ardor and attended to with diligence. These candidates have all shown that they are willing to work and grow intellectually, which in life is always an uphill battle. But even after getting the grade and passing the class, do we still strive to learn? Attend to each new piece of knowledge you have striven to retain. Develop a love for learning which tends to the flame of knowledge that has clearly brought you success. I would now like to ask Shreya Mandrakar to light the next candle. As Phyllis Brooks once said, character may be manifested in the great moments, but it is made in the small ones. As we gather today to bask in the magnitude of these students' accomplishments, we must first recognize the moments that are often not seen, when a student's true character really shines. Each small gesture speaks volumes for the values of kindness, respect, responsibility, honesty, and integrity that we strive for every day at a national school of character. We gather here today not only to distinguish those moments, but also to celebrate the great ones to come. I would now like to ask Yashi Srivastava to light the next candle.
leadership is much more than gaining titles. Rather, it is genuinely taking the initiative to influence and support others. Effective leaders are compassionate and understanding while also being strong and determined. These candidates led by example in both the community and inside our own South Brunswick schools. As leaders and as new members of the National Honor Society, you have already demonstrated these qualities. As individuals and as a whole, we are called to lead, as others have done for us. Harry Truman once said, in periods where there's no leadership, society stands still. Progress occurs when courageous, skillful leaders seize the opportunity to change things for the better. Therefore, this induction into the National Honor Society marks the beginning of a new journey as role models. I would now like to ask Maitri Suresh Kumar to light our next candle. Service is a helping act, a contribution to the welfare of others. It can be exhibited in many ways and sometimes hidden in small but consistent acts of generosity. True service is given with sincerity, with the purpose of helping others and giving back to the community. Dedication to service provides its own satisfaction. This satisfaction will be found in the positive reactions to your service. Mahatma Gandhi once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. Providing service to your community will not only allow you to gain a better understanding of other people, but will allow you to gain a sense of self-realization and self-appreciation. As members of the South Brunswick community, I encourage you to help others, make service your goal, and pay the opportunities you have received forward. Now, I would like to call up to the podium one of the National Honor Society advisors, Mrs. Monique Liguri. The students being inducted tonight have been found to demonstrate each of these core qualities at an outstanding level. We are pleased to welcome them. We would now like to recognize each inductee with the following presentation. Tonight, we are pleased to welcome each and every one of the following students into South Brunswick High School's chapter of the National Honor Society. Each inductee was asked to share a quotation that served as inspiration for their success at SPHS. These words, along with their smiling faces, remind us that our future is truly bright and full of promise. Thank you. 
As we prepare to bring our newest candidates into full membership, the flames of scholarship, character, leadership, and service spread to ignite the light of responsibility to these ideals and the sense of obligation that binds together all members past and present and their commitment to its common goals. Inductees at home, please stand wherever you are and look at the candles on your screen. Candidates, as you take the pledge of membership, you hold the flame that is the spirit of the National Honor Society. Following along with the pledge on the screen, please recite after me. I pledge to maintain my high scholastic standing, to hold as fundamental and worthy an untarnished character, to endeavor intelligently and courageously to be a leader, and to give myself freely in service to others. In doing so, I shall prove myself worthy of a place in the National Honor Society. Congratulations, everyone. You have been formally accepted into the National Honor Society membership, and the flame is now within each of you, lighting the way toward your continued growth. Faculty, esteemed guests, parents, family members, and friends, everyone who is watching, we are proud to present the newest members of the National Honor Society. Now my co-advisor, Mrs. Liguori, will close our ceremony. As we close our ceremony, let us take one more look at the torch that represents the National Honor Society. We can't help but notice the insignia of the burning torch, the emblem of the National Honor Society. E.J. Eaton, one of the first members of the National Council, wrote as follows. The emblem of the society is the keystone and flaming torch. The keystone bears, at its base, the letters CSLS, which stands for the four cardinal principles of its organization, character, scholarship, leadership, and service. As the keystone is placed by the builder to hold the perfect arch in perpetual stability, so the structure of our education must be held firm and true to the purpose of life by the virtues represented in the symbol. To bear forward the searching light of truth, to lead that others may follow in the light, to keep burning in our school a high ambition for the ending values of life and to serve. The torch is a symbol of these purposes. As we conclude our ceremony, let the light of this torch continue to lead the way for these distinguished scholars as they walk on the path toward continued excellence. In conclusion, one final congratulations to the inductees Despite a year filled with many challenges and uncertainties, you have still maintained the high standards of South Brunswick High School and its chapter of the National Honor Society. Mrs. Vetterami and I are very proud of you and wish you nothing but the very best. You deserve it. Strong hearts and minds.